Nick, what are you doing at the moment? Uh, just finishing off the staff training course. Can you stop that? Uh, our bid for B-Jam. Yep. The offer document's out now, but we want to make a video film to tell the B-Jam shareholders all about Iceland. Iceland Frozen Foods is one of the great success stories in retailing. It's grown from humble beginnings into one of Britain's fastest growing frozen food retailers, and all in a very short space of time. Iceland started in 1970 selling loose frozen foods and has evolved throughout the 1970s and 80s. The company takes pride in its rapid development, sound management, ability to adapt to market forces and its willingness to invest in the latest technology. In addition to all this, the financial statistics, including the key areas of sales, profits and volume growth, have been impressive every step of the way. Now Iceland is set to extend its horizons further with its bid for B-Jam. B-Jam first saw the light of day in 1968 as a frozen food retailer for the bulk buyer. The company has developed over the years, but it has failed to move with the times in a number of important areas. B-Jam has not kept pace with Iceland in the growth areas of convenience shopping and eating, and has been slow to invest in modern technology. This is reflected in disappointing financial results when compared with Iceland. Indeed, the BJAM results for 1987-88, announced recently, showed only a 3.2% rise in pre-tax profits. Mr Walker, we've had a look at the background to the companies. You've made this offer for BJAM. Why do you think your team are better qualified to run it? Our directors have been together now for about 10 years. We all know each other well. Uh, the directors are still in their late 30s, early 40s, enthusiastic, ambitious. For years now we've had a policy um, to take this enthusiasm down from the boardroom by saying that nobody can employ anybody unless they're better than what they are and preferably younger as well. You say you're unique yes. and your figures over the last 15 years are very, very impressive. Yes. You're still expanding, so yeah. why do you need this takeover? I mean, some people would say it's, it's an ego trip. Well, we only need it at the right price uh, and uh, I think it is important to, um, to remember that the directors of Iceland own over 40% of the equity. Therefore, we're not just um, a, a bunch of professional managers uh, with ambitions to run a bigger company. This has got to be right on the bottom line. It's got to be right for the shareholders. And I do think that our, uh, the shareholders in Iceland should take some comfort in the fact that our own personal stake is on the line here. And what about the customer? Because they're important too. Most people would say that Iceland and BJAM operate in very much the same way. So what can Iceland offer to the customer? Well, yes, I suppose superficially people think if they don't intimately know the company, yes, we're, we're similar shops and uh, we both sell frozen foods. Iceland evolved into the traditional freezer centre in the late 70s, early 80s. And as the market changed, superstores, um, uh, the supermarkets moved out of the high street, superstores built on the edge of town, the market's changed. We've changed with it and we're now a completely different business based largely on convenience. Firstly, convenience of location. Uh, filling that gap in the high street, uh, selling uh, essential grocery products, short shelf life products, chilt products, that's an important area for us, almost top up uh, shopping in the high street where, where Tesco moves out, we move in, uh, but also convenience of products because people's lifestyles are changing. It sounds from everything that you're saying that there's going to be something of a shake up at BJAM if you succeed with your takeover bid. What sort of measures are you going to implement? The main business itself, the freezer centres, uh, 
we shall have a two-year program of refitting those into the Iceland style. The, um, the newer and more modern stores, it, it won't involve anything much more than a change of fascia, putting in some Iceland uh, chilt cabinets, uh, open refrigeration units, the Iceland equipment. But in the, in the much older stores, it will be a complete rip-out. Um, so that, that'll take two years, but we would reckon that we would have a common range of products in their stores within six months. That's not just one way. We're not saying just the Iceland range. I mean, this isn't just a one-way flow of good ideas. Uh, I'm sure there's good ideas and good products from VGM. They'll have good management as well that we can bring aboard. We shall put together the best from both companies. Nevertheless, you've got great store by Iceland's products. What's so special about Iceland's products? I should just say, it's not somebody else's product with our name stuck on it. It's made to our specification, to our recipe, and I think the best thing you could do there is have a word with Ian Schofield. He's, he's our own label manager, and I know Ian will be delighted to show off his, uh, his products. Malcolm Walker has been singing the praises of Iceland's own label products, but why are they so important? Choice is the key. This year alone we've launched over 250 new own label lines. We try to be different with own label. We try to give the consumer something they cannot get somewhere else. And how do you do it? How do you produce so many so quickly? It's because we have no committees. Because we've got control and we can start with our own art department here and go right through to our own uh, product development people through the packaging and get the products in the stores. You've mentioned packaging, we're surrounded by it here, but why does it matter? It matters because we want to sell the products. A consumer goes in the stores, picks up the product. To get them to pick the product up, the packaging's got to be right. If the packaging does not look appealing to the customer, she will not pick it up. And in a nutshell, how does the company and the consumer benefit from own label products? To the company, it's our chance to be different from our retail competitors. To the customer, it's the choice of products available. That's right, yes. I mean, I think this year we will do towards 300 own label products, new own label products. What I'd like you to do, though, is perhaps put it on a, a level that we can understand by giving a clear illustration how Iceland benefits from actually developing the own label range. OK, a good example is our pizza range, which actually we've laid out here. We've got over 20 own label pizzas in the Iceland range. And what about BJ? Well, a much smaller range. In fact, their total range is uh, less than our own label range. And in their range, uh, they've actually only got two own brand products. OK, and what would that mean if the takeover is successful? We would incorporate the strengths of our pizza range into their stores, and we believe that this would put at least another £2 million into the till. Well, I think that's taking care of the pizzas. What about elsewhere? Could you do it elsewhere as well? Uh, we're very confident, particularly in the areas of added value items, things like ready meals, things like cakes and gattos. Uh, we're particularly strong in these areas, and by putting our expertise in these areas into the B-Jam range, we believe we can increase the sales substantially. a bit about the technology that you use here. We use modern electronic point of sale and support systems, scanning and data capture handheld terminals. And what on earth does that mean in layman's terms? It means that we're using modern technology to the advantage of both the company and our customers. Scanning speeds up the process for the, of serving our customers through the stores. It allows us to capture the information even more accurately and takes out the human error element of the cashiers. And it also therefore means that we can provide the customers with a speedy and more reliable service through our checkouts. And what happens when it's gone through the checkout? Is it linked up to other things elsewhere in the organisation? Almost certainly. It doesn't just die there. The information is, goes into the back office, into the manager's office, and every night the telephone lines from head office line up and take the information back to our mainframe computer, where information about every single item we've sold and the numbers that we've sold go into the computer at head office, and this information is then available for the buying department and the marketing department to make their decisions with. Now, what about the handheld data capture terminal, if I've uh, got it right? You have it correct. The handheld data capture terminal is not quite such a modern piece of equipment as scanners in retail operations. It is the ability to key information into a terminal and transmit it by telephone line back to our head office. Our managers use this for creating their orders of frozen food and groceries and connecting up at the end of the night and transmitting it by telephone line 
back to head office and straight into the computer. In the past, this information would have had to have been read down the telephone line to a young lady sitting at a terminal who then keyed it into the computer. If I was to ask you to briefly sum up the benefits of using the very latest technology, what would you say? The benefits are there to be seen by the customer. We are able to offer them a much more speedy and effective service through the checkout, particularly since we've installed our laser scanners. As far as other benefits are concerned, the store manager has information available to him which he can use to his advantage, and our company at head office has accurate information which they can use to make better and more effective buying and marketing decisions. And what about the stores themselves? What, what is the philosophy behind the design and layout of an Iceland store? Well, the design and the layout of an Iceland store has evolved, of course, over the years, from the 70s when we started to the 80s where we are now, and on into the 90s, which is where we're going. We started life with uh, chess cabinets and nice blue tile walls. Well, that's, that's history. What we've developed over the last four or five years is a completely new design that will take us into the 90s. We've used the best design companies in the land. We've used Conran Design to help us to get a store that's absolutely right for the customer today. And you see behind me a store that's pleasant to shop in. It's nice beige colours with graphics that are modern and up to date. And you also see the sort of freezer cabinets which are ideal for the consumer to use today. Now we haven't mentioned the staff at all in all this, so what is their role? Well the staff role interlinks entirely with that of the image because whilst we're a self-service operation, as nearly everybody is today, the staff actually are very important because the staff are there to help the customer, help to find things for the customer, answer questions about frozen food, uh, ensure that there's everything that the customer needs when they come to the store. We spend a great deal of time, effort and energy in actually training our staff. We have our own video training department, for example. There are 30 video films that are actually in use in the stores at any one time, covering everything from cleaning a floor to customer care. We believe it's extremely important that our, our staff actually know how to handle customers. What you seem to be saying is that there is a very definite Iceland image. Is that so? And if so, is it important? Oh yes, there is a definite Iceland image. Um, I suppose it's to, do with, it's to do with youth, it's to do with enthusiasm, it's to do with giving the customer what she wants. All right, it's an old marketing ad age, I agree. But at the end of the day, if you don't give the customer what they want, then they won't come back. And we're trying to give them what they want, not for today, but for the future. That's what we've done over all the years we've grown, and that's what we're trying to do from now on. That's really quite a claim. Tell me all about it. Well, the brains of the system are basically two central computers housed here behind me. They control the flow of stock into the distribution warehouse and the dispatch of goods to our retail stores. The process starts when goods are delivered. Each pallet is checked by quality control and given a unique serial number. The computer instructs the pallet truck driver via a VDU screen in his cab where to locate each pallet. Store orders are received by the computer and batch ready for picking. Cases are then picked and loaded onto the conveyor belt using a system of green lights and digital displays known as CAPS, that is Computer Assisted Picking Systems. All the cases of stock merge in a sortation area where a laser bar scanner reads each bar code and logs it onto the computer. The cases pass by a series of chutes, one for each store. The computer then activates a series of boots which kick cases down the correct chute. At the bottom of the chutes, the cases are palletized, ready for delivery. So what are the principal advantages? Well obviously a faster turnover of stock, better utilisation of space, increased productivity and most of all prompt reaction to store needs. Mr Kirk, what's Iceland's approach to the financial side of the business? At Iceland we've always had a fairly simplistic approach to financial controls. For example, all our systems have been designed so that people at all levels can understand them. Can you give me an example of this? Yes, I can. For instance, when we first started, at the end of the first week, we actually worked out the net profit that we'd made in that shop for the week that we'd just gone through. 
We've done that every week since then, and we now have over 180 stores. Our computer systems have become more sophisticated. For example, on a Tuesday, we actually can work out the net profit produced for the company as a whole the week previous on a store-by-store -store basis. But if your takeover bid is successful, can your financial controls cope? Well, we've got good basic systems, we've got the experience, and we've got the computer know-how. We've successfully upgraded our computer systems three times. So, the answer to your question is, yes, we can cope. We don't envisage any problems with the enlarged group. Mr Walker, in conclusion, I'd like to clarify some key points. First of all, why should Iceland and BJAM get together at all? The two companies are a natural fit. They've got stores mainly in the south, we've got stores mainly in the north. Put the two together, we've got 450 stores and we only conflict in 12 towns. Th there would only be 12 closures out of 450 stores. And what about the future? Where would you see the new company going in the future? We've got 17 stores in Liverpool alone. We've only got one in Glasgow. There's got to be a thousand potential sites in Britain. Finally, what are the benefits for the BJAM shareholder? We think we can do a better job. We've got the superior management, we've got the right trading formula. And remember, our own personal stake's on the line here, so we've got to get it right.